Good morning and uh, welcome to our morning devotion, um, our breakfast for the soul. Um, it's our daily uh, devotion that is um, that we share an encouragement in the morning, um, a breakfast from the scriptures. Um, so we want to um, welcome you if you're joining us for the very first time. Uh, we have been um, doing a series, um, a series on the book of Exodus, um, uh, which um, I hope that you have received a blessing over the number of uh, weeks that we have been here. And uh, we still have a bit of a journey to do on this very uh, book of Exodus and uh, trying to find some encouragement on the children's, on the journey of the children of Israel to the promised land, which parallels also our journey to the promised land, which is um, the new Jerusalem. Um, so today we continue from where we ended. Uh, last time we were on um, uh, verse 15 of Exodus 14. So uh, today we go to verse 16 of Exodus 14. Um, the Lord said to Moses, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel will go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I have uh, entitled today's uh, discussion, discourse, as the Red Sea Experience Part 1. We'll probably stay here for three parts. So today we are dealing with the Red Sea Experience uh, Part 1. Um, the children of Israel uh, are surrounded by mountains on both sides. The Red Sea ahead of them, the Egyptians armed to the teeth, pursuing them from behind. The situation looks bad. In fact, it looks very bad. But Moses is not worried about it. Uh, he knows what God has done before, the mighty miracles, the mighty plagues that he has shown his power. Uh, over the the Egyptians, so he knows that what he did before, he will do it again. And I want to say to those who have experienced the power of God in their life to say that it doesn't matter how dark it might look today, uh, it doesn't matter how bad it is, it doesn't matter how smelly it might be, how horrible it looks, but if he has done it before, uh, if God has come through for you before, uh, be rest assured that what he did for you, he will do it again. And, and, and if you just heard about him and you just heard about the testimony of what he did for others, I want to assure you that what he did for others, he will also do for you. And as we have said before, faith removes fear. Faith in God removes fear of the enemy. Uh, if we don't want to be afraid of the enemy and all his powers, uh, his demonic powers, his witchcraft powers, or whatever powers that the enemy has, if we don't want to be afraid of that, we need to have the faith, uh, the faith in God. Uh, in the armor of God, faith is a shield. It's a shield that protects us against the darts of the enemy, the fiery darts of the enemy, the attacks of the enemy. You need faith uh, in order to protect you from being afraid of them. So the children of Israel uh, had no faith. Uh, they are terrified um, for their sake, Moses decided to call upon God. Uh, 
Uh, and we heard yesterday that God says to the children of Israel, the solution is not in the past. The solution is not in the side. The solution is ahead. So you don't need to turn back or to turn to your friends on the side, on the left or on the right. Uh, the solution is ahead. The marching orders are clear. March forward like uh, pathfinder god says by the left foot forward much forward much forward is where we go uh, and the idea of marching forward or of going forward was indeed an act of faith of trusting god that even though there is no way he is gonna make a way so now on their part they needed to have faith and god now deals in this verse 16 with the mechanism on how to open the way as he instructs them to march forward his responsibility is to open the way and this is how he does it in verse 16. the text starts by saying with the word but as we have said before but means in the contrary, but signifies a change of direction. The children of Israel are in trouble. At this point, things seem to be going from bad to worse. Then God introduces a but, a change of, direct, uh, of direction. This is where God says to them, uh, I'm about to stand up. And as I stand up, I'm going to red card the devil. Uh, I'm going to turn things around. Uh, how I wish we had faith enough that holds on until we reach the but. Until God acts. Uh, as we have said before, man's extremity is God's opportunity uh, for him to act. So uh, I wish we can hold on until he steps in unfortunately many of us give up turn back give in uh, when the bat is just around the corner when victory is just around the corner many of us give up some of us have been on the road for a long time in the christian journey for a long time uh, and we've been praying for breakthroughs and, and and for god to come through in whatever situation we find ourselves in whether it is financial or whether it's relationships but, but but we've been asking god for a breakthrough and some of us unfortunately give up just when god is about to come through uh, your enemies might be pressing you down uh, and hurling insults and abuse at you but but god can uh, god is able he can change the direction of the situation that is uh, going downhill uh, instead of uh, continuing for things to go down and down as it is uh, they can rise up as he has promised that when we wait upon him we wait until the bat we will mount up uh, on wings like eagles uh, as we get to the real core of the message uh, what is the point here uh, in verse 16 uh, god had allowed the enemy of his people to have an upper hand until this far but this time he has decided enough is enough he's about to act he's about to do something something so big it will be the landmark of his power something so big generations and generations to come will look back at this point as the point of god's mighty power uh, if god's people were not surrounded if they were not pursued by the enemy they will sorry for god to perform this landmark miracle it is because of the crisis that was at hand that god moved in such a mighty way it is the crisis it is the troubles and the trials that gives god the opportunity to show his mighty power you see god will not bring a bulldozer to kill an ant 
Uh, it is when there is a mountain ahead of you that God will bring a bulldozer. God is going to show his power when the situation looks bad, when the situation looks like it's beyond your up, uh, capability and ability to handle, uh, when it seems to be so big that the doctors have given up, when it's so big the therapists have given up, God waits for the situation to be so bad so that when he comes in with his mighty power, it is clear that it is the hand of God. It is clear that glory and honor will be to his name. The children of Israel have been crying and complaining. Now they have an opportunity, a rare opportunity, a rare privilege of seeing God's mighty power doing amazing works. They are about to realize that God allowed the problems to come their way so that he can show off and show his mighty power in solving them. He allowed the crisis to come their way so that um, he can conquer their enemies once and for all. They are about to realize that he allowed the challenges so that they can be channels of his blessings. They are about to realize that God allowed the mountain to stand on their way so that he can turn the mountain into a monument of his amazing grace. They are about to realize that after this experience, God referred to this event as the one that affirms that indeed they are God's chosen people and that their God is mighty and powerful. Uh, it is God's purpose for you to have your own Red Sea experience. Uh, it is God's purpose for you to have a point in your life where God's power is clearly visible before your own sight. It is God's purpose uh, for you to, to reach a point where you realize that he's not just the God of Abraham, uh, Jacob and Isaac. It's not just the God of the past. But this God, because of what he will do for you, he changes no longer to be a God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, but he becomes your God. <laughs> he becomes the God of your own experience. So that when you pray, you no longer just say, as you did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can say, I'm praying to a God who in 2020, in September, he came through for me. As you go through, you can tell your children and generations and generations to come that I was at this predicament. I was at this particular situation and God came through for me. It is because of uh, the lack of the Red Sea experience that many Christians, when trouble comes, go and consult witch doctors and false prophets. It is because they don't have their own Red Sea experience where they can point back and say, God, as you did then, I know you're going to do it now. It is because we don't have that experience. When you have had your own experience of God's power in your life, uh, you will be a, a Christian. Um, you will be a Christian whether the sun is shining or whether there is darkness, the days are dark and trouble surrounds you. But if you don't have that Red Sea experience, when challenges come towards you, you will want to go back to Egypt. You will want to conduct yourself in the same way like unbelievers, like someone without God. Now the children of Israel are about to appreciate all that they've gone through. They are about to realize that for every trial, there is a blessing. Uh, and that they need not to be scared or to be unsettled, to be terrified uh, of trials and challenges that will come on their way uh, because God is going to use their trials uh, to be channels for him to show his glory, that they can thrive even through their own trials. When you have been through our own Red Sea experience, 
when we have seen God in our own life, when we have seen God perform miracles, when we have seen God do great things, when others are afraid and terrified, we are going to smile through the storm. Uh, we, 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 when others are getting high blood pressure and their BP is going high and, and they're getting ulcers because of the troubles around them, you will smile and rest assured that God will take care of business because you have seen him before. You have your own testimony. You don't even need to read about it because your own testimony testify of the power. As they say, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your own word will give you assurance. And then you will be able uh, to sing along with Andrew Crouch when he says, I thank God. For the mountains i thank god I thank him for the valleys i thank him for the storms he has brought me through for if i have never had a problem i wouldn't know that god could solve them i wouldn't even know what faith in god could do and then join him as he sing the chorus through it all through it all, I have learned to depend upon his word. May the Lord bless us in the midst of our trials so that we can learn to trust in Jesus, learn to trust in God, learn to depend. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity and the privilege you've given us this morning to hear your word. Lord, we pray that um, you may lead and guide us in the midst of our trials. Give us our very own Red Sea experience, a testimony, an encounter that we can testify. And, and even in the years to come, we may not be moved because we have seen the mark in our lives so help us not to to be afraid of the trials help us not to be afraid of the challenges that are ahead of us or behind us or on the side because we know you're going to use them to show your power and to give us a testimony the lord be with us and bless us in all this in jesus name we pray amen uh, we'll ask you to click at the bottom for the notification if you, you have not done so, so that when we go live on this page, you may get those notifications because those who were friends you used to get them, but you don't get them anymore. May the Lord be with you and bless you until tomorrow morning.